Good morning and happy Father's Day to everybody. It's a, it's a beautiful day. You know, we love being able to come up here. I tell our 10 o'clock uh, people we have a service up here at 10 o'clock every Sunday and then at 11. And I tell the 10 o'clock people that they are the home team. They're the home team today. And then we have the visiting team coming up from the independent side. So we're glad that you're all here. It's, it's a glorious day. Hope that you enjoy the buffet a little bit later today. That's why we only have one service. But uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, we, are, we are Faith Dialogue. Celebrate Seniors is a ministry of, of Faith Dialogue, as Pastor Hell said. Uh, we, we're here to serve. We are here to serve. We've got a wonderful volunteer team. There's about 14 of us on the team. And we just love being here and being able to serve you in every way possible. Uh, we are a 501c3. If you've ever, if you've ever liked to, uh, to, to check out our ministry, we're on the website. There's some information in your bulletin as well. Um, we do encourage stewardship, good stewardship, which means that all of you are encouraged to be givers. And it isn't it's, it's something with, what God wants from you, but what he wants, God wants for you. You're supposed to be givers. And if you decide that you'd like to be able to give to, to Faith Eye, that, that's wonderful. Um, there's, there's, as you leave, there's some envelopes over there if you'd like to be able to give. But again, that's completely volunteer. We are here to serve you and we're so glad that we are able to do that. So uh, one of the th things I want to do is I want to be able to, to get in our sermon today. Um, you know, today is Father's Day. So I want to be able to talk a little bit about Father's Day. And uh, as you can imagine, for Father's Day, what I've done is I've included a couple jokes. Everybody likes jokes, right? And I've also decided that we're going to talk a little bit about football. Is that okay? Talk a little bit about football, but you'll see it's, it's, it's just kind of a, a prelude to, uh, to be able to, uh, to talk a little bit about, about, the, uh, about Father's Day. So again, happy Father's Day to everybody. You know, Carol and I live, we are fortunate that we live right downtown, not too far from Bank of America, and not too far from Community Presbyterian Church. And we've got a lot of friends over there, and we know that, those, that church very well. And one of the things about Community Presbyterian Church, if you've noticed, is that every week they have a new marquee. And there's whoever the marquee guy is, the sign guy is, he's very funny. Because he always has something interesting to say. And this week was no exception. No exception. It says this. It says, a father is a man who carries pictures of children in his wallet where there used to be money. <laughs> so... <laughs> And I could, I could relate, you know, and I was, I was talking to my son-in-law, and my son-in-law, Yoram, um, is, a, is a new father. Um, our granddaughter's only four years old, so he's a new dad, and when he was a new dad, he got some advice from his dad. And his dad said, this is what a dad is, okay? If you get a pizza, and it has four slices for the four of you, and one of the slices falls on the ground, that's your slice, that's dad's slice. <laughs> so... I think that's true. And I mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about football. And, and I like football, and football is a man's sport. So I thought for Father's Day, we ought to mention a little, just a little bit about football. You know, American football is unlike the rest of the world's football. Football is the world's number one sport, but Americans play football completely different than the rest of the world. You know, football is a contact sport. There's a lot of contact sports. But American football is not a contact sport. It's a collision sport. It's a collision sport. We, you know, I used to play football when I was in high school and college as well. And you have helmets and you have pads and you find a way to run full speed and collide on the football field. Now, American football is still the number one sport. Um, there's, there's millions of people that watch it every Sunday. And you know, last year, because of the national anthem problem, the take a knee, it, it kind of fell out of popularity. People didn't want to see that. People are patriotic and they don't want to see that on TV. So the attendance dropped down a little bit. But by Super Bowl last year, it popped up. We had 113 million people that were watching football for the Super Bowl um, this, this last year. Now the reason I chose football, this is just a prelude, is because I want to talk about this idea of praise. Because it's easy at a football game to get excited. We stand up and we cheer and we're excited for our team. And I believe the reason that we do that is because we're created in the image of God. And there's something that God has put in us that makes us want to praise. That wants, it's, it, it's almost as if an event is, is not quite finished unless you hear applause. You notice even this morning when, when Paul that got done with the Lord's Prayer, with the Our Father, you felt like applauding. 
And you're applauding because you want to basically say, amen, I, I like what I heard. I, I like what's going on. And, and that's basically what, what God calls us to do. You know, it doesn't take a lot of encouragement to get up on your feet and cheer for your team when there's a touchdown. But when we witness the spectacular, when we see something remarkable, there's something in us that just makes us want to, to praise. And see, praising football is one thing, but God calls us to praise, praise him. Example, in Isaiah 43, the Lord says, the people whom I form for myself will declare my praise. In the book of 1 Peter, for, uh, the apostle Peter tells us, he says this, that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, so that, which means in order to, for the reason that we are, so that we might declare his praises of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. You know, even the word that we just say, hallelujah, hallelujah is just a Latin or a Greek word. It's, in fact, it's Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. It's all the same word. It's praise God. Hallelujah just means praise God. Now, the reason we're, we're talking about this is because I, I read a book not too long ago. It was by a guy named Kyle Eidelman, and I've been to his church. It's in Southeast, uh, it's out, Southeast Church, and it's in uh, Nash, uh, Louisville, uh, Kentucky. And he wrote a book called Not a Fan. Not a Fan. And what it did is, is it, exactly as I described it, which is it's one thing to, to be a fan of a football team, but God is not interested in just having fans. He's interested in people that truly praise him. And the reason they praise him is because they have a relationship with him. God is our heavenly father. And just as our father, if, you're, if your father is around today, if you get to see your father, you, you, you praise him. You, you, you honor your father. And that's what God is deserving. God deserves our praise. So today, I'm going to focus on just five verses, just five verses in the remaining time, of Psalm 103. And as I read this psalm, you'll recognize the psalm because it starts off this way. It starts off by saying, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is hid within me, praise his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, forget not his benefits. Now, in this psalm, at the beginning of your psalm, when you get home and you take a look at your Bible, at the beginning of a psalm is often what's called a subscription. A little, a little teeny saying at the top of it. Now, it's not part of what we consider the inspired text. Somebody put it in there. But quite frankly, it's been in there for a long time. It's very ancient. And what Psalm 103 says, it says, this is a Psalm of David. This is a Psalm of David. You know David. David is the king of Israel. He followed Saul. He was the anointed one. He was the one that the Bible said was a man after God's own heart. This was David, and David wrote many of the psalms. So we have no reason to believe that this psalm was, no reason not to believe that this psalm was, was written by, da, uh, by David. So here's the thing. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now, when somebody sneezes, what do you say? Say, bless you, right? Or gazuntai, right? In Mexico, I just came back from Mexico, they say, salud. And salud and gazuntai are the same thing. It means health, to your health. So we say bless you, but that's not what the Lord Bible is talking about. You see, when we bless God, when we bless God, who are we, mortal man, to be able to honor a blessing to someone that's greater than us? That's not the blessing that we give God. We give God a blessing because of who he is. Because of who he is. We offer God our praise and our blessing because he deserves them. You know, unlike God's blessing upon us, which are wholly undeserved, and only because of his mercy and grace, our blessing to God is done out of an understanding that he is praiseworthy. Have you ever thought about that word? Praiseworthy. God is praiseworthy because of all that he's done. He is the creator. He is our heavenly father. And in this psalm, what David will start to do is he'll start to identify his, the benefits of God. One of the attributes of God is that he is he's beneficial, that he's omnibenevolent. He's always beneficial. He always has provided for us. He's a provider of all our true benefits, and as a result, we are not to forget him because of those benefits. This is important. See, God is worthy of our praise. That's why this psalm is written. This praise and honor to God should be given to him as a response to who he is and what he has already done 
not on a basis of emotion. You see, when, we, when a touchdown happens at a football game, it's out of emotion. You jump to your seats and you cheer. That's an emotional response. But our praise to God is not an emotional response. In fact, you'll read as we go on that it starts inward. It's something inside of us that eventually has to come out and it's expressed by our lips and by our mind and by our heart. In this very same psalm, a few verses after this, David says, but from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with his children's children. See, that's who God is. God is the one that is the righteous one. So let's go on to the next section. We read the first two verses. Let me read the next three verses. Verses 3, 4, and 5. David says, Who forgives all our sins. He's talking about the Lord Creator. Who heals all of our diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who satisfies your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. See, David says that we bless God who forgives all of our sins. This word translated sins is a, a Greek word. It's called anon. Anon. And it's, it's mentioned over th almost 300 times in the Bible. 300 times this word is used. And it's translated as perversities, our sins, our depravity, that which is evil. And see, God forgives that. There's something about the human condition that is attracted to that. But God in his wisdom and in his mercy and his grace forgives us of all of our sins. David's telling us that one of the great benefits mentioned is forgiveness from all of our sins. When we understand the magnitude of our sins, we understand the greatness of God. We really do. I'll say that again. When we understand the magnitude of our sins, we start understanding the greatness of God and the particular act of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins. When we realize how depraved we truly are, we understand what a great deed that God did for us, this great benefit. David is, is showing that true worship was something that begins inwardly. David says this, he says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And he says this twice. Now, if you read through the Psalms, this is not unusual. Often in Hebrew poetry, something is said and then it's said again. And this is for emphasis. It's to call your attention. Just as I did a minute ago. I'll say that again, right? We say that again. Sometimes you're talking to your children, right? And you have to say things more than once. You ever notice that? Sometimes, sometimes you have to say that more than once. And we do that for emphasis. We want to make sure that you get the point. You ever notice in an old King James Bible, it will say, verily, verily. Because God is trying to get your attention. David is trying to get your attention as well in the psalm. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord. He's getting your attention. Then David says, all that is within me, bless his holy name. This is the emphasis David is giving as he introduces us to worship and praise. You know, this is, this is similar to the teaching that I did uh, if you heard my teaching when I was talking about the difference between being joyful and being happy. Remember, we were just talking about that a couple weeks ago. You see, it's a different thing. It's the same type of thing is that we sometimes need to tell ourselves to be happy. Because joy and happiness is two different things. But the more joy you have, the more often it is expressed in your countenance and who you are. And that's what David is saying. He's reminding his soul. He's saying, bless... Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He's reminding all that is within him to bless the Lord. You know, sometimes people say they're joyful. And I say, if you're so joyful, then remind your face. You need to remind your face sometime that you're joyful. It's the same type of thing. We need to bless the Lord. And it's all that was within us. We bless the Lord. All too often, we praise and worship God half-heartedly. Have you caught yourself doing that? Sometimes you get together and, you know, you'll pray or you'll bless the Lord or you'll kind of be going through the motions and you're really not blessing the Lord. It's not your whole soul. And David is saying, all that is within me, all that is within me, let's bless the name of the Lord. Then David finishes his first section by saying, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Forget not his benefits. Um, this is a common pattern also in Hebrew poetry. David uses repetition for emphasis. Also common in Hebrew poetry as a complementary idea, something else that he wants to say. Notice that the benefit that David mentioned first was what? 
Forgiveness of sins. You see, David believed that, and this is interesting, isn't it? Actually, at the time that David was the king of Israel, the concept of forgiveness of sins was not clear to the Jewish people. They had a sacrificial system that would remove sins for a temporary period of time, but then they would have to have those sacrifices offered again. So David really didn't even understand what we understand, that God would ultimately pay the price for our sins. It was a debt we couldn't possibly pay, so God paid it for us in order for us to have forgiveness. In the next verse, David says, who heals all of our diseases. All of our diseases. Now, all of us should be interested in that, right? I would be interested in a God that would heal our diseases. You know, we believe that God does bring healing. Now, God brings healing in a number of different ways. He'll use our doctors and our nurses. He'll use our medicines. But we also believe that God has the ability and will miraculously cure us allow us to be able to have extended life. The theme verse, by the way, for Celebrate Seniors is, is Psalm 91, that they would have a, a extended life, a life of days, a lengthening of days. That's the whole idea of, of Psalm 91. So there are some people that believe that healing is not for the day. And they believe that this verse is basically talking more about the idea of freeing us from the disease of sin. But that's not how it's written. As I mentioned before, if you follow Hebrew poetry, there's a way that it's, and sometimes things are complementary, but sometimes things provide additional explanation. And the way these verses are set up, David is enumerating a number of benefits that the Lord provides. He's not just telling you that sickness is the same thing as, as sin. No, sickness is an additional benefit that God provides. Then, then David says this, he says, the God who redeems your life from destruction. Redeems your life from destruction. You know, here's the thing. I think all of us recognize that life is, is fragile. And it doesn't matter whether you're seven years old or you're seven years old. Sometimes we need to be reminded that life is indeed very fragile. Um, David would be familiar with that. Uh, at the time that David was alive, there were many, many things that could happen to you that all of a sudden your life would be cut short. There were people that had relatively simple accidents today that we would have. Maybe a, a bad cut or maybe a stomach flu or maybe you would, would break a bone. That at the time of David, your life was so fragile that, that could actually end your life. But David says this, he says that God redeems us he redeems us. He restores us. You see, our, our bodies are not only age and they decay, but as children of God, we know that there are many accidents. There are many calamities, dangers and perils that our benevolent God protects us from. I'm sure you've experienced that. There are times when you say, oh my goodness, I can't believe I was, I was that close to disaster. I, I can't believe that I happened to look up and a truck was coming by. A truck was coming by. There's a, there's a gal that we love, you probably know her too, Amy Grant. Amy Grant is a singer-songwriter, and we had the opportunity to, to see her a number of times in concert. And there was, a, there was a song that she sang, this was probably 20 years ago, called Angels. Angels. And she talks about the idea, in fact, it was interesting because the song is actually very theologically correct. She talks about that there's angels that are watching us, that are helping us. And this is a verse in her song. It says this. It says, she says, I wish I could sing like Amy. No, that wouldn't be good, would it? No. <laughs> I wish Amy was here could sing. And Amy Grant sings this. She says, God only knows the times my life was threatened just today. A reckless car ran out of gas before it ran my way. Near misses all around me, accidents unknown, though I never see with human eye the hands that lead me home. So Amy Grant is talking about exactly this, that God redeems us, that he restores us, that he protects us from calamities. David continues, he says this, who crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desire for good things. You see, God's greatness isn't just limited to the things he protects us from, but God gives us a good life. Everything that's good in our life comes from the provider, God, who gives us these things. He's a, he's a good God. And just as a father gives you good things, God, our Heavenly Father, gives us good things. The Bible says that he crowns us with love and compassion. 
His compassions fail not. He not only loves us, but the result of God's work is that the very meaning of salvation, this whole idea of salvation, people misunderstand salvation. Salvation means much more than forgiving your sins so that you get to go to heaven. It's the, the root of salvation has to do with wholeness. It's the idea of we are a whole person that God provides for us, that he wraps his arms around us and loves us so much that he saves us. He saves us. We're protected. The satisfaction becomes the source of our strength and energy. He saves us from and he saves us unto good things. Okay? He saves us from things that are, that are damaging and he saves us unto good things. David then continues and he actually ends with this. He says, your youth is renewed like the eagles. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, I'm a theologian and I take what I do pretty seriously. So I got to tell you, you've probably heard before these stories about eagles are amazing because on a mountain and they pluck all their feathers off and they smash them. Have you heard that before? They smash their beak and then they're renewed. Well, that's really not true. It's, really, it's a nice story, but that's not true. If, if an eagle went up on a mountain and plucked all his feathers out and smashed his beak across a rock and waited until they all grew back, he would probably die before they all grew back. But eagles are amazing. Eagles are majestic birds. They rise above the currents. Of all of, if, if, the, if the lion is the king of the forest, the eagle is the king of the skies. Majestic sight. If you've ever seen a bald eagle in flight, it's just amazing how they are able to do that. A soar. In fact, one of the things that's interesting is an eagle, if there's a storm that comes in, you know how like small little birds will kind of hunker down and they'll get real close to the tree and all of their feathers will kind of fur up and they'll try to ride out the storm and the rain will come on them. Do you know what eagles do? Eagles will often soar. They'll get above the clouds. They'll get above the storm. And they'll be able to soar above it. So this is the idea. Eagles actually do molt. Now an eagle that molts, once an adult eagle is, is old enough, about four or five years old, they start to molt, which means that some of their feathers get kind of fuzzy and they fall out. But only usually one or two at a time. They don't all fall out. They, they molt. But while they're molting, they look like they're, they're uh, in distress. And they really aren't. Those, those feathers are renewed. Those, those feathers come back. And they look just as great as they did before. They have ability to renew themselves. And that's what the psalmist is talking about. That, that we would renew our health. Just like an eagle is able to renew the feathers on their body. So that they can soar. So that they can soar. The Lord satisfies your years with good things. James 1.17 tells us that every good thing and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shifting shadow. You see, every good thing in your life is because of your Heavenly Father, who is worthy of our praise. The reason that David wrote this psalm is sometimes we forget that everything we have, all these good gifts are coming from our Heavenly Father, who is gracious and benevolent. You see, some of us don't have the best relationships with our father. I have a wonderful relationship with my father, but many people do not. And that's why sometimes you have to read through the Psalms to understand how good God truly has been to you. Our earthly fathers are a reflection, but not a perfect reflection of the love that God truly has for us. So all of these verses in Psalm 103, we are told to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You know, I mentioned Amy Grant a while ago. And Amy Grant sings about angels. And did you know angels are, are there to bless the Lord? There's a number of times in the Bible that we see angels doing nothing more than praising God. In Revelation, it says, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be unto our God forever and ever. And then all the angels shout, Amen. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, remember the angels came. And what did they say? They said, glory to God in the highest. So the angels are there to, to praise the Lord. It isn't just the angels. The scriptures say that the heavens, the stars, the moon, everything that's in the sky are there to, ba to basically praise the Lord. Um, it also it says in, in, the, in the book of Revelation, it also says, it says, every created thing which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things will be heard saying to him 
who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. That's our Heavenly Father. That's what David is saying. Our whole body, all that is within us, need to be able to praise our, our Heavenly Father. So let's go back to the psalm. The very last verse of Psalm 103. I only read the first five verses, but the very last verse says this, bless the Lord, O my soul. You see, David ended the psalm the same way that he started it, with a blessing to God. There's going to be times when you don't feel like blessing the Lord. Those are specifically the times that you need to say, all that is within me, all that's within me, I want to be able to raise my hand and be able to, to bless the Lord, because he is truly worthy of our praise. Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord. You are an amazing God. And Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have forgiven our sins, that you've healed our diseases, that you've allowed us to renew our strength like eagles. And Lord, would you allow us to remind, would you just remind us that from time to time, we just need to remind all our soul to be able to bless you and give you the honor that you uniquely deserve and desire. In Jesus' name, amen.